Okay, welcome to a new lesson on auxiliary verbs. And I'm including modal auxiliary verbs, can, must, might, could, would, should, will. All of those verbs are called modal verbs, but they are a subset of auxiliary verbs. They are a type of auxiliary verb, OK? And if you want to understand what a modal verb is, in my opinion, I would define it as it's a verb where you don't add an S with the he and she form. Yeah, I play, he plays. Play is an ordinary verb. I go, he goes. Go is an ordinary verb. But I can, he can. I will, he will. I would, he would. They're all modal verbs, OK? Now, auxiliary verbs like have or has or am, is, are, we use them in tenses, as you have seen many times in the last few classes. But we also use them in questions. Yeah. Do you have a brother? The do is an auxiliary verb. Um, has she got a sister? The has is an auxiliary verb. So in questions, we use auxiliary verbs in negatives. Yeah. He didn't go to the beach. Didn't is an auxiliary verb. So in tenses as well, but also in passive. We will do passive in one of the future classes. But if you say um, uh, if you say something like I kicked the ball, that's active. But if you say the ball was kicked, was is an auxiliary verb, making it passive. Yeah, the ball was kicked by me. So you can see we use auxiliary verbs in almost every sentence that we utter. Yeah, because this covers most sentences. But there are many other reasons for using auxiliary verbs, not just these four situations. And we're going to look at some other situations. We're going to look at question tags last, even though I've written it on the board first. But we're going to look at that one last. But let's start with echo question. Now, I want to make it clear that this is two people speaking. This is person A. And I mean, all of those are person A. And this is person B. And then we're going to put in some answers right now. So if somebody says to you, he hasn't spoken to our boss, if you want to check, if you want to check that information, if you want to kind of say, is that the case? Is that true? You just say, hasn't he? Hasn't he? Well, a question, yeah, it's an echo question. Hasn't he? And notice the auxiliary saves you from saying the rest of the sentence. It's a form of ellipsis, which we're going to talk about down here as well. But we just say, hasn't he? And it means, hasn't he spoken to the boss? Hasn't he spoken to the boss? Hasn't he? And if you want to say that you also haven't spoken to the boss, you say, neither have I. And this is still the second person talking. So the first person says he hasn't spoken to our boss. And the second person says, hasn't he? Neither have I. Or maybe this person has spoken to the boss, in which case he says, hasn't he? I have. And it means I have spoken to the boss. OK, so that's how we respond to this first sentence. Now we have again, all of these are two people speaking. We have somebody who says we have been waiting for ages. Please remember present perfect continuous with these long verbs that take a long time when you use for and you talk about a long duration for ages. So we have been waiting for ages. Somebody says that and then you reply. These are all replies. Yeah, there's two people speaking. It's a reply. You reply. Um, um, have you? Maybe, you know, that person is responding to is, is talking about their group and you say, have you? Have you been waiting for ages? Yeah. Have you? Like that. Now, notice that this is positive. So this is positive. This is negative. So this is negative. Yeah. So we have been waiting for ages. Have you? And if you want to say that you have also been waiting for ages, you say so have we. 